for next week. Okay, cool. Martin McDonough, three billboards opening soon uh, nationwide, worldwide. What, to you, what is the theme of this movie? Why would somebody want to go see your film? Um, it's, uh, it's a story about um, a mother's rage at, at, you know, the loss of a child. And it's about her attempt uh, to seek justice for that. Um, but it's done in a, in a kind of blackly comic way. Um, uh, with a character that's a force of nature. Um, so, you know, if people like good acting and, and a couple of laughs, but also uh, a kind of meaty story, then, uh, then I think they, they've come to the right place. We were talking in our editor's meeting this morning, several of the characters in the movie, not just Francis's character, but several have this rage within them or are seeking revenge of some sort or have some kind of anger issues. Talk about that thread weaving through several characters. Um, <coughs> well, I think it is sort of prevalent in, in the world today, not just in America today. Uh, it seems to be uh, something that, that, that's been going on for a while. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I, I kind of tapped into my own um, latent rage a little bit in the, in the writing of this. But um, so, so it's kind of exciting to, to, to set a character off from that place of a kind of take no prisoners uh, woman um, who, who, who's seeking justice. But, uh, but I'm glad to say the film is, is more, is a little deeper than that. It's a little bit more about humanity and change and hope than, um, than a story that stays in, a, in an angry sort of raging place. At the same time, we want it to be as truthful as possible to that anger. I do want to mention to anybody watching, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you might want to watch this video a little later because we are going to get into a couple of plot points. Um, tell us about Frances. So what, uh, did you write this with her in mind or how did, how did you come about bringing her on board? Uh, yeah, it was completely written for her. Um, she's, she's, you know, the, I think the best actress of her generation. Uh, she, uh, we met each other about uh, 16 or 17 years ago after a play that I'd written uh, that was only in New York. And then we bumped into each other again about five years after that. And uh, uh, she, we, we kind of said we wanted to work together on something. I said, we should do a play. She said, no, we should do a film. Um, and, uh, but, it, but she was always going to be like, you know, my number one um, person to go to for, for my first female lead anyway, particularly for a character like Mildred. Uh, who had to be, um, you know, tough and single-minded, but someone you kind of love at the same time, and someone with a dexterity for humor as well, which we've, you know, seen, you know, over the years in her Coen Brothers work and, and most of her work. But also, uh, she's someone who I knew wouldn't sentimentalize the character or make her uh, more palatable than she needed to be. One of the mo most important things for us was to, to. Um, to, to let the audience in, but to not give them, you know, an easy ride, because she's not the perfect person that she might appear to be uh, at the beginning of the film. No, I mean, most of, most of her town doesn't like her at all, and that's even before the billboards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, now that you've worked with her, and you knew what you probably would get going in, but then once you actually had the process of working with her over those weeks, how was she, similar to what you thought she would be in terms of an actress and how, how did she even you know, surprise you? She was almost more similar to Mildred than, uh, <laughs> than, the, than my image of Frances. She was very single-minded, uh, very, um, I think we both of us, between us, had a love for Mildred, had a love for the character and uh, were, were or, uh, doing everything we can to defend our version of her. But luckily, um, that, that kind of coincided uh, completely. Um, maybe there's like 5% that we might have like a little bit of friction on. But I think that even that friction added to, added to Mildred because uh, I think she was uh, equally at war with me at, in, at, at times as she was with the town. And, and I think that's, uh, that created a, a, an exciting frisson to the, to the movie too. I love this sort of ironic fact in, in real life that that her most iconic character her Oscar winning character in Fargo being a police um, uh, and now she, you know that's what we see her as in terms of uh, maybe our favorite character now she's totally on the opposite side of the police 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely on the opposite side. She she'd probably throw something at, at Marge if she saw her in town. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, I mean that just shows uh, Frances's range. I think you know she can be uh, a, a completely convinced uh, police officer and you know a, a woman who's going to war with them um, equally. You had worked with Sam before, you had worked with Woody before. Were they also in your mind as you were writing those characters? Yeah, 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 very much so. Um, Sam, particularly, I uh, uh, I had his voice when I was writing the, the Dixon character because I knew Sam uh, could go to all the, the dark places required because um, it's a pretty dark character, particularly at the start. And he, and he knew he wouldn't, um, again, sentimentalize him or, or make him too too soft, but I also knew that because there's something so lovable about Sam as a as a person as well as an actor, um, that we would be uh, we wouldn't uh, that the change in the character would be believable, uh, and that's all down to Sam. Woody, uh, he's a you know beautiful actor, and he we needed a, a someone in there who you instantly love, instantly uh, see as a decent human being, even though Francis's character is saying he's, he's not, or he's not doing his job. We need it to be, it to be an actor who uh, the audience loves. Uh, and, and that's true of Woody, because he's such a you know, lovely, humane guy uh, and a great actor. So, so I couldn't have hoped for three, three better actors in this. The switch you talk about that happens, uh, I guess, two thirds of the way in the movie. I think part of that, not just Sam's portrayal, but part of your genius in the screenplay is the letters that Woody writes, especially the letter that Sam is reading, where the audience is not on on uh, Sam's side, Dixon's side, all through the movie up till that point. Uh, he seems like the evil police character that that might be in a movie, but the fact that Woody's character Willoughby thinks that there's good within Dixon, and you hear that in the voiceover, you hear that from the letter, I think really helps the audience make that transition. I think so, yeah, I think that's true. We're kind of allowed to see Woody's hope for Sam's character, almost. And, uh, and yeah, that does, that does allow us in, because Woody's character is, is, is probably the, the, almost the hero of the film, strangely. Um, his, his heart, uh, beats throughout the, the, the length of it. And uh, his humanity, I think, is what uh, sort of changes everyone. It's a beautiful movie to watch. What, tell us about assembling your crew and some of the, the key people behind the scenes. Sure, well, Ben Davis is the, was the DP and we worked together on, um, on Seven Psychopaths too. Um, but he's also done like big Marvel movies. He did the first Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Doctor Strange. Um, so, uh, so, I mean, this is very different to that, but we kind of wanted to make a film that, uh, uh, some of our favorite films are like American movies of the 1970s. So we wanted this to have that look and that feel, um, and that kind of downbeat aspect, but, uh, but a beauty to it too. Um, and, uh, and a, a lot of those, I use the same, uh, first AD from the last one too. And there are about four or five of the actors who, who worked on the last movie or the first one. Um, uh, so it felt like a proper kind of repertory company uh, this time around. It, there was an ease uh, of uh, on set, you know, because it was like all friends working together. And I think that kind of shows maybe in the film. There's a, even though there are dark aspects to it, there, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of hope and, and humanity and fun uh, to be had in the film. And the production design, building this small town, making it so believable. Um, and I love the, the way you and, and the, your team position those billboards often, uh, the angle where you could see all three of them, either from behind or from the front. Yeah. Uh, you, your production design, I guess is what I'm saying, it was just um, uh, miraculous here in, in the way that you put all that together. Thank you, yeah. Well, that was Inbal Weinberg, who uh, was the production designer on this. And the first time I'd worked with her. Um, uh, but she was great. Uh, and she, yeah, we, 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 we searched a lot of roads for that perfect road. Because uh, we had to find somewhere with houses that would look down onto the, onto the little stretch where the billboards were going to go. And then, like, choices like um, 
uh, the color even of the billboards uh, and and the design of the billboards before they're taken over by Mildred and after was was uh, quite important. Um, we first see the billboards and they're kind of disheveled and dilapidated, but quite beautiful and iconic too. Um, and then they change into this stark red and black uh, message that. Uh, we, we were really lucky we chose the red, I think, because at night time it kind of pops out as if it's glowing in the dark. And uh, that was something we hadn't quite counted on. But uh, I think it gives the film like a kind of iconic quality in places. Why did you want to make this an American uh, setting uh, as opposed to uh, European? Um, there's something just so uh, cinematic, I think, about the American landscape. Um, something that you couldn't really do anywhere else. Uh, but also, uh, I knew it had to be one of the southern states of America. It had to be somewhere where there was this kind of um, underlying racial tension. And I don't think that's, I mean, we have those issues everywhere in, 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 in the UK and uh, in Europe too. But I don't think it's quite as pointed or, uh, or on the surface as it is here. So, um, so I think that was uh, another of the reasons to uh, to make it American. But I also a character like Mildred, it feels like such a proper big American uh, part, you know. Uh, and I don't think um, I can't imagine a European woman lead of a film having that kind of uh, uh, go-getting take no prisoners kind of uh, energy. Maybe I should try and write one. This one is going pretty well, so. <laughs> we'll yeah. Isabel Huppert, too. she might have uh, something to say about that. That's right, that's right. Uh, well, you just mentioned, I mean, the incredible reviews already coming out of the festivals, and now that the uh, critics and, and other people are seeing it within the industry, the public will weigh in soon. And we all feel like, I mean, we're an awards website, you know, we're about to see you on a lot of red carpets, because I think there's not only you, but some of the, Behind the scenes people we mentioned, some of the actors. What would that mean to you and the movie if it starts getting that kind of awards recognition? Um, I'd love it, you know, I'd especially love it for 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 the actors, for Francis and Sam and for Woody, um, because I think their work is so phenomenal in this. Um, so um, uh, it would be great to, to walk the red carpets beside them. Um, uh, but, when you make a film like this, you know, the, the subject matter is a little, you know, um, uh, dark in places. Um, so we weren't sure like two months ago if people would go for it, if they would be allowed in to get the humor or to love the characters or, or, or to, uh, to accept the story. So, so now we're in a position where, where, you know, everyone who's seen it seems to have really uh, gone for it. Um, and it's much better to be, you know, talked about in terms of... Uh, awards than not to be you know this is a film that could have easily gone under the radar um uh, some years but um but it's it's kind of there's something kind of exciting about it um so i'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be the kind of movie that especially audiences they'll discover they'll be talking to their friends or their family and they'll say hey have you seen three billboards yet i think i think it's going to be that kind of movie uh going forward Hopefully, hopefully. Also, it's, I mean, the, the title is quite peculiar, too. So it's kind of like, what was that? What's that movie with the long... They won't get it confused with another title, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, but I, I, I like movies that you kind of can discover yourself. Um, uh, and I, I kind of, I think I saw Moonlight pretty early last year, and it felt like it was, uh, you know... Uh, you know, something that only only I knew about almost, but it turned out not to be. It's almost fun that way for a while when, when it is a movie that you've seen and others haven't and you can, it's kind of a, it becomes your personal possession for just a short period of time. Yeah, exactly. And and I think sometimes the earlier you see something, especially with a film like this, has got, which has got lots of twists and turns, you kind of want to get in there before you've accidentally uh, heard what those are, you know. So, um, so uh, I don't know, there's, there's something kind of joyful about um, uh, the characters in this film um, and so I hope you know audiences will, will take them to heart one last question you, you won an Oscar a little over a decade ago uh, you've been nominated again in, in screenplay I believe you joined the Academy about about then right around the time of in Bruges or somewhere yeah. around then uh, I think it was after you're in the writers branch yeah uh, yeah yeah what do you like most about uh, voting on the Oscars and what 
you know, taking your own films out and, and what, what sort of a screenplay grabs your attention that makes you want to vote for it? What, what are you looking for within the structure or, or in other ways that makes you want to vote for a screenplay? Um, for me, I think it's originality. It's, uh, you know, seeing something that uh, hasn't adhered to the usual, you know, um, Hollywood uh, tropes, you know, something that uh, you can see that people uh, push the envelope or just told a completely personal story. Um, I think last year was pretty good for that because there were like three films going head to head uh, like Moonlight and Manchester by the Sea and La La Land in a slightly different way uh, but you could see it's like you know three people and their vision about the world or their their idea for a story about the world that wasn't really diluted by commerce or what's been done before so that's what I kind of always look for when I'm when I'm voting both for, for script and for, for picture and, and for in the acting categories too. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done that. I mean, this is one of the most <laughs> original films I've seen in, in, in many years and uh, good luck with it. I, I, we're really hoping to see you on a lot of these uh, award show red carpets over the next few months. Thanks. I hope to see you there too.